Welcome back to the Black and Gold Report. Again, we're talking recruiting with head football coach Pete Chinnick. Coach, uh, we talked uh, briefly in the first part of the program here that you have recruited a couple of players that, that you've listed on your list as athletes. For us laymen, uh, what, what does that mean? What does that mean when you when you recruit someone as an athlete? Well, typically they played a position in high school, whether it be wide receiver, running back, defensive back, uh, quarterback. Uh, and we're not settled yet as to where they're going to line up for us. Uh, David was a quarterback and Teron uh, was more of a running back, the two guys that we listed as athlete this year. And so we're still in the process of deciding, you know, they're probably both going to start off on offense, but that doesn't mean they're mm -hmm. going to end up there. Uh, so it just kind of gives us a little bit of a leeway as to where we line them up and what we do with them in the future. And I assume that as you're recruiting them, you're, you're very forthright in mm -hmm. telling them that, hey, you know, you might have played running back, but that doesn't mean that you're going to play running back for us. We're looking at you X, Y, Z positions, and they're, they're comfortable with that, clearly. Correct. The majority of the guys that we list mm -hmm. as athletes usually played quarterback, uh, you know, coming out of high school. And so uh, we do have a couple that kind of fit, you know, into Ron's uh, position. Uh, so we tell them, look, don't know that you're going to line up at under center as a quarterback. That's what we told David. You may get some reps there. Uh, we're still just going to kind of wait and see how that plays out. Okay. Well, um, how, how do you find out about recruits? Um, do you get calls from coaches? Do you just sort of fish? Do you hear rumors through the grapevine? Talk us through a little bit about how you learn about a recruit. Well, we recruit the state of North Carolina um, pretty much exclusively. And so every coach on our staff has uh, somewhere between 50 and 60 schools that he's responsible mm -hmm. for. Uh, there's a region of uh, the state that, that they all recruit. And so through those connections, they've all been doing it now for about four years at the minimum, six at the most, uh, with a couple of gentlemen that have been on my staff the whole time. They know those schools and they know those coaches. And so uh, as, this, as this recruiting cycle ended, we started recruiting 2013 already. Hmm. Uh, so we're, we've already started to look at guys who are juniors, uh, who will be seniors next year. We've started to uh, put our board together, so to speak, as to the guys that we're looking at who stick out. Uh, so it's a year-long process. We do get some calls from coaches uh, about different guys in the area, and we will get some calls, you know, randomly from different people. Uh, but for the most part, I'd say our coaching staff knows of uh, probably about 99% of the guys out there that we're able to recruit. And who on your staff had the bad luck of having a Western North Carolina has to drive four <laughs> hours to? to... Jamie Deese does have the mountains. Okay. So, uh, he, we, we, we get him over there a couple times a year. Well, let me ask you, what are, what are some of the things that you look at in determining whether or not uh, a high schooler can make the transition to college? I mean, is it all physical, or how much do you look into their mental capabilities as well? Well, you look at their mental capabilities a tremendous amount. Number one, are they uh, able to get into school, and do they meet NCAA regulations? Because there's a lot of really good football players out there uh, that do not have a test score or do not have the core courses mm -hmm. that you need to be able to get in here or to be D2 eligible. So that's that's number one. Then you find out what type of person they are. How do they fit into our system? And when we sit down and talk to them, uh, how do they conduct themselves? How do they handle themselves? Uh, obviously, if they weren't a good football player, we wouldn't recruit. Sure. So, <laughs> so you're always at, you're also asking yourselves that question: Is this person a good team player? Can they can they play in this organized system uh, other than having the skills to play? Yeah, we, we have a set level. of questions that we go through with every guy. You know, if he missed a game, why? Uh, you know, once our once once one of our coaches gets out of the car and starts walking uh, through the front doors of the high school, every person that he meets, he's asked asking about that mm -hmm. player. Uh, what type of person is he? Have you had any run-ins with him? You know, walk by the cafeteria. What's that person say about him? What's the, whoever we can to find out as much information about the type of person they are uh, to see if they're going to be a good fit for our program. Coach, we hear so much in the news in recent years about uh, universities and football programs that are violating NCAA vi uh, rules, whether it's Tennessee or Ohio State or some of these other schools that have been in the news. Um, and we don't really know a whole lot about the rules and guidelines and regulations regarding how you can recruit and why you can recruit and what are the rules. So tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, for Division II football, uh, there are uh, periods of time where you can do certain things. Uh, during the season, you can only make one phone call a year uh, and you can only evaluate them playing. You cannot have a face-to-face -face contact, sit-down interview with them unless they come to your campus uh, to either watch a game or to watch a basketball game, something like that. Then from November, December, and January, or excuse me, December and January, we're in a contact period. We can go visit them in their homes. We can, uh, you know, go visit them at school. So 
our calendar is what it's called, a recruiting calendar, really kind of dictates what we can do. And, and the rules are pretty clear. Those, the guys who break the rules, uh, they understand the rules. They know right, what coach. they're doing. They're just looking for ways around them. Well, we appreciate it. We're excited about your, your upcoming freshman class, and we're going to take our next break, and we'll come back and we'll talk ladies' hoops with Coach John Haskins.